Welcome to the final video in this series covering systems principles before we move on to living systems and then human systems. So we now have an understanding of some of the key concepts of systems so that we're in a position to look at what a healthy system needs to maintain itself and also look at how systems become unhealthy. So from what we've already seen, a healthy complex system can maintain its boundaries. The boundary keeps influences from the outside that might be harmful at bay. But an adaptive system needs to be open to allow necessary matter, energy and information to cross over the boundary to sustain its continued existence. It must coordinate all its internal functions well. The system must be able to maintain all the processes needed to survive. Matter, energy and information must be organised and utilised effectively for the system to remain healthy. It can respond adequately to external influences. There will always be influences in the external environment that impact on the well-being of the system. The system must have adequate means of protecting itself and adapting to be able to cope and thrive in its environment. It needs to have diversity amongst its parts. If the parts in the system are too similar, the system will be limited in the types of situations that it can adapt to. But if there is good variety among the parts, it's more likely to be able to cope with whatever might arise. It has a good balance between autonomy and being connected, connectivity. Now there is always a trade-off between the autonomy of the parts that gives them their variety and the need to connect and belong. If the balance is too much towards autonomy, the system lapses into chaos. If the balance is too much towards connectivity, the system becomes rigid and stifled. The system has to have effective flows of energy, matter and information between the parts. So the parts need to share in a constant flow of matter, energy and information between them for them to thrive. The matter, energy and information that flows must also be sufficiently healthy, consistent and free of toxic matter. It needs parts that obey the rules adequately. The parts must be willing to align their behaviour to that of the whole system. This means following rules prescribed reasonably well enough. Often there are some parts that will break or bend the rules, but there's usually enough room to cope with that. It needs levels that all interact well between each other. So when there are systems of systems, the various levels need to be adequately connected so the levels dynamically enhance and sustain each other. And finally, it has quick enough response delays for the tasks required. Delays in responding to internal and external changes leads to instabilities for the system that can lead to system breakdown. So healthy systems are well connected, but we do need to note that a system can become overconnected. Imagine an office which has so many rules, procedures and information flows that the system gets bogged down. Everybody has to know what everybody else is doing and decisions don't get made in time. And there are times too, of course, when we need to disconnect, such as children moving away from their parents to live their own life, or sometimes we need to escape from a toxic influence. In general, however, a healthy system is one that is well connected. The parts interact well and in harmony. Humberto Maturana states that love is the grounding of our existence as humans. In other words, the natural state for a complex living system is to be connected, and in that state, love naturally arises. So all the various parts of a system need to work in harmony with each other. Now there's an indigenous Māori model from New Zealand called Te Whare Tapawha that demonstrates this well. Te Whare Tapawha was created by Mason Dury, who descends from the Rangitane, Ngāti Kaufata and Ngāti Raukawa tribes. He proposed that a person has four interconnected dimensions to their being. All need to be healthy and in balance for a person to be in good health. So Te Whare Tapawha means the four walls of a house. 
And just as no wall in a house can stand without the others to hold it in place, each of the four dimensions hold each other up to create the whole human being. The first wall is tinana, or the physical aspects of life. The second is fano, or family and relationships. The third is henengaro, the mind, our emotions and thoughts. And the fourth is wairua, the spirit. This interconnectedness of being fits very easily with systems principles. So while we will look in more detail later on at the parts of a person, this model here is included now just to highlight the way a healthy system must be effectively regulating its own internal needs and manage relationships with external systems, it has to maintain all connections in a dynamic, life-enhancing way. Now, we can create a continuum for complex systems. At one end is connection, harmony and love, and at the other end is disconnection, abuse and violence. Connection builds love and disconnection builds violence. When we feel unsafe, threatened or that we cannot get our needs met, we often feel disconnected and we are more likely to respond to the perceived threats in ways that disconnect and harm. A central aim of this program is to help us all gain understandings and develop skills that move us along the continuum towards love and connection and away from abuse, violence and disconnection. Part of the journey of connection is understanding how we fall into the trap of disconnecting ourselves so that we can recognise when it happens and avoid the harm that it might cause. So we know that complex systems can be harmed such that their ability to remain connected and flowing is impaired. Violence or abusive behaviour is behaviour that causes harm. There are many ways that people get harmed, so violence shows up in many different forms. It's far more than just physical. Emotional or mental violence of course can be as harmful or even worse. Now, from what we know, we can formulate a definition of violence from a systems perspective. Violence is the invasion of a boundary or the disruption of a necessary flow across a boundary. Now, this also includes willfully enabling or allowing violence to occur and allowing children to witness violence is in itself an act of violence. But this definition is true for all complex systems, from a single cell creature, to a tree, to an animal, to a person. The more complex a system is, the more boundaries it has that can be invaded. So the invasion of a boundary is violence. This violence often appears as one part invading another part. It might be to take resources or gain control over the part. It may attack from a fear that the part might not be able to survive or maintain itself as it wishes. It might arise as an act of revenge. Acts of violence such as someone attacking another person or a nation attacking another nation fits this pattern of boundary invasion. An act of violence impacts not only the part being invaded but of course the whole system including the part responsible. Often a system has a dedicated infrastructure that takes responsibility for the efficient functioning of the system, such as politicians do in our government. This can become corrupted as they favour certain subgroups or repress other sections of the system for their own benefit. Sometimes a part or a collection of parts try to gain control over the whole system by invading other parts. So forms of violence like these are seen in dictatorships, where one individual or a small group has taken power and forced those under their power to act only in ways they desire. Violence also occurs when something critical to a system's functioning is withheld from it. A siege is aimed to deprive the inhabitants of vital supplies so they can be defeated. Withholding the basic necessities of life from a person is a crime and is a form of violence towards them. Having described abuse and violence within a system, we need to explore ways that a system can learn to cope and recover and thrive once more. The healthy aspects of a complex system need to be returned and the harm done needs to be healed. We now have some fundamental concepts that creates a framework for further exploring how we can learn to function in more loving ways and avoid falling into abuse and violence. From here we start to look more closely at living systems and how their special nature impacts on how they operate 
and makes us aware of the strengths and weaknesses that have an impact on our ability to love and connect in positive, affirming ways.